Okay, I'd like to talk about um, a part of the Mark Edit application that doesn't get looked at very often, or at least I don't think so, and that's the console application, partly because I've been doing a little bit of work on it. Uh, the console application um, is a um, terminal application. It's, it's a version of Mark Edit that doesn't have a GUI, basically. Uh, the application allows you to uh, make or break or do the linked data work or process um, uh, files and a wide range of uh, activities. Um, it also provides you the ability to pass tasks through the application, so you can actually create tasks um, using the uh, GUI application and then run them um, through the uh, console program. So why would you do that? So there's a number of folks uh, for use cases that either um, for variety of reasons prefer running, uh, have very specific tasks they want to do and prefer doing it through the console, the command line so that it's, uh, they don't have to open the GUI. Um, you might embed these into um, shell scripts or into Perl scripts. Um, if you're running on Linux, you may just prefer the command line over the interface. Um, Mark Edit's command line tool exists in all versions of the application. On Windows and Linux, it's a separate application called CMarkEdit. Um, on the Mac version, it's the, the same um, application name. Uh, to run it, uh, the console program lives within the uh, the application um, directory. So probably the easiest way to, to use it, if you're going to be using it, is to set a environmental path. Uh, Mark at its installation program starting on 1217 uh, will set an, an environmental path on Windows. The environmental path that will be used is Mark Edit Path, uh, like this. This is one I've set up um, on my local machine, and if I um, echo this out, you can see where Mark Edit is installed on my local machine. All right, so what I'm going to do is um, let's talk about how this would be used. So let's say I want to run the console program. So we enter at the command path the location to the console program, cmarkedit.exe. And by default, if there are no options that are provided, the program assumes you want to actually run the tool. And it's going to ask for a source file, a destination file, and a type of application process that you want to use. Let's say you want to see what the um, console program can do. Uh, use help as a parameter, and it'll print out all of the options that you have available to you. So you can have uh, source files, rules files, uh, viewing, um, XML processing, uh, adjacent to mark and marked adjacent, um, making and breaking, splitting and joining, running tasks, and handling um, character encoding as well as doing linked data stuff. So let's look at the linked data one because this one will give us a chance to look at a number of different pieces. So the linked data option, if we look here, it says build links, specify a semantic linking algorithm. So let's go ahead and run that. And it tells us that's not proper usage. Um, why isn't it? Because we didn't include a source file, a destination file, or options. If we look back in the help, we can see the options des uh, designate what part of the um, linking tool we want to use. Um, we have options here, LC ID, detects main entry, auto detect, detect subject and links, OCLC work ID, 3XX, and a limiter option. So let's say we wanted to use a limiter option. Let's say we have a file, and I do have a file that has uh, mesh headings in it. That would be this one right here. If we look at it, you can see that there are mesh headings in this particular record set. Say we wanted to just process mesh records instead of all of the collections that are found within MarkEdit. Well, let's see what collections are found within MarkEdit. One of the options above, this prints out all the collections that have been um, identified and profiled within the application. The collection identifier is the identifier used um, in subfield 2 of the mark record to identify when a particular um, vocabulary is being used. In our case, we want to use mesh. So let's go ahead and do the next step. So in this case, we're going to do build links. We will include a source file, uh, slash original sets 3 and nlm test bib.mark destination file
and options. And we are going to auto detect because we're going to look at subjects and we're going to limit to mesh. So this will run and limit the process to output to just mesh. And so if we run it, we see process one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 17 records. Um, we can output that, and so we see 17 records. So at this point, we have a data file. We can see it over here. Um, and if I wanted to look at that file, um, the process I might use, I might uh, double click on this and execute it, turn it into a .mrk file. Let's say I want to um, not do anything in the GUI application. So um, I have two options. I can either break the file now, or let's say I just want to view the file. Mark it, it has a viewing option. Um, we can use mark edit, see mark edit dash source. And we'll use the console.mrkc and dash view. And this will output out the view um, in whatever format it happens to be in this case. And so we can see here embedded in the records now are the mesh headings. So we wanted to actually look at it in its mnemonic form. So we could go ahead and do that. Um, in Windows, you can stack commands. So I need to break the file and then I can view it. So mark edit dash path. Uh, slash c mark edit dot exe the source file is there desktop original sets f3 console dot mrc destination file RK, we're going to break, and then in Windows, you use two, amper, two am, uh, ampersands to represent uh, the second command. So we are going to run a second command where our source file is the destination file we just created. And so there we go. We can view the file. So it breaks it and then it views it. Um, I think that uh, what I may end up doing to simplify this process. Um, okay. So as I've mentioned, um, we can do this kind of a command where we can do um, two um, options here. Uh, and sorry for the break, I paused it for a minute, so hopefully this doesn't uh, sound somewhat disjointed. Um, where we can do uh, two commands, uh, like I showed you, where you can make and break. Um, but you don't have to do it this way. Uh, the other thing you can do is rather than doing two commands like this, um, you can actually use the um, dash uh, pretty option. And if the value that you pass into it is a... Um, Mark file, it will automatically convert the data and um, output for you um, the result. So if I do that, um, you notice I didn't have to make and break. Um, I can also then um, attach that to the buffer argument, which if I put all, will print out the entire file. So I can see the entire file here, um, which lets me look at it. So if I put these together, let's start with um, doing the uh, uh, conversion to mesh, let's say I want to do this all in one step, I could convert the data to mesh, use the second command, and then output the results so I can take a look at it. And so this way it goes ahead and generates the um, mesh headings. And then when it's finished, it outputs the data so I can take a look at it. And by default, the view option outputs 2,000 bytes, um, but I can add through the buffer either more bytes or ask it to output all. 
So this way, um, using the uh, command line tool, I can go about working um, with files without really ever having to open the GUI if I don't want to. Um, but I can also use the, the uh, command line tool um, to uh, automate uh, processes that I may have set up. So well, the task was something that folks had asked um, a lot about in terms of being able to provide um, uh, processes against uh, running tasks. So in uh, Mark Edit, um, I have a task here that I went ahead and created. And so I can run um, tasks directly against uh, the application. Um, I think that I have to use full path names um, for the task process. It's slightly different than everywhere else. Um, but let's go ahead and try it in both directions. So the first thing we'll do is we'll try it without having to use full paths. And I, I just can't remember if I can or can't. So let's see here, mark edit.exe. Uh, task is the option that is available. So we'll enter in the task file. So we'll enter in the task file location, at path data, roaming, uh, mark edit macros and the task is tasks file 2016 12 uh, tasks file dash 2016 12 16 there we go all right so there's the task file the source file is going to be our um, uh, file that we just worked with uh, slash Original sets F3 uh, I think it'll work fine with it being uh, non I think it works fine on mark files and then I need a destination file See if that works. And it does. Um, so you'll see when that popped up, you, there was a little thing that popped up that told you what was going on. Um, in Mark Edit, um, I have it pop up a small dialog to uh, give back feedback. Um, although this is something that uh, I'm uh, considering taking completely away and having um, just something at the end here that, that gives back a, a result. Basically something that just says it's, it's processing and then gives back a result when it's finished. Um, I like having that little dialog box um, so that you can see what's going on. Because um, essentially what's happening is the this process is uh, shelling out to um, the mark edit application uh, to run it. Um, because that's kind of how it has to work. Uh, but um, you can see that it finishes the output. And just like last time, if I wanted to, I could um, uh, pair this with another application, another call, and see the results. Mark edit dash. Path C mark exe dash source console with task dash view pretty and run it and we go ahead and run those and then outputs out. And one of the things that we asked it to do, if we look up here, um, is to delete 900 fields and then add one at the end. And indeed, it deletes all of them but the one that we just put in, um, as well as doing the RDA helper and whatnot. So um, you can see that you can chain uh, things together. You can create very complicated tasks and run them um, through the tool. And like I said, I will um, likely go ahead and add an option that allows you to completely turn off that uh, dialog window. I like it for feedback, but maybe other people don't. Um, that would be easy enough to turn on and off. Um, but this allows you to um, chain things together and do stuff with it. So uh, there's actually quite a bit that you can do um, with the command line tool if you um, want to use it. Um, like I said, I, I tend to use it quite a bit um, when I'm working uh, on 
uh, my Linux box, uh, just a few records, um, being able to just do something like this. just uh, give it the data that I'm looking for. And being able to just look at the data really quickly um, is handy um, and something that uh, makes life a lot easier. Um, but the ability to do other things like um, processing, making, and breaking, and uh, running tasks and all those various processes um, definitely uh, is uh, handy as well. So anyways, um, there are uh, the, the command line tool is something that I do um, uh, put uh, effort into using, partly because it's one of the parts of the application that I tend to use. Um, and uh, coming in the, the next release, so 17th, 18th of December, um, I will be adding some environmental variables and um, providing a couple updates to hopefully make it uh, continue to make it easier for folks to use um, and maybe um, find more um, things that can be embedded into the, the task, uh, the, the, the command line tool. So if you have any questions, let me know.